Praise the Lord. Happy Mama's Day to all you mothers out there. I entitled the message, The Fifth Commandment, and of course that's where we're taking it from. Let me begin by saying Baruch Haba, welcome in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh HaMashiach, Jesus our Christ. You know, everybody in this room has something in common. You know what it is? You all had a mama. You all had a mama. Uh, <laughs> some of you are more fortunate than the rest of us because you still have your mamas with you. Uh, some of us only have a memory, but it's a good memory. Yes. Mother's Day is a joyous celebration set aside to honor those wonderful women that are in our lives. You know, it's not easy being a parent today. Everybody would agree with that, I'm sure. And I can sympathize with a family that had three small children who were determined to have their own puppy dog. Well, the mama knew, as all mothers know, that she would be the one that would ultimately end up caring for the dog. But the three kids all promised that they would take care of it if only she would give in and let them have a puppy. Well, she finally gave in. They went out and they bought one. They brought it home and they named it Danny. Danny the puppy. Well, the kids kept their promise to care for it, clean up after it for about the first month or so. But as time passed, poor old mommy found herself caring for, feeding the dog, groomed it, fed it, cleaned up all of its messes. And she decided that because the kids were not living up to their promise, they needed to find a new home for Danny. Mom was quite astonished to find, however, the children's reaction to get rid of Danny. They were quite mild. One of the kids even said, well, Mom, we're going to miss him. And Mom replied, yes, we will miss him, but he is simply too much work for one person. And since I'm the one that has to do all the work, I say he goes. One of the other children popped up and said, Mom, if he wouldn't eat so much and wouldn't be so messy, can we keep him? The mom held her ground and she said, no. It's time to take Danny to a new home. With one voice and in tearful outrage, the children said, Danny, we thought you said Daddy. Make sure you read uh, the pastor's notes on your church bulletin because there's another good story on there about that. Someone once said, when you tell the story of any great man, you have to begin with his mother. The love and influence of a mom is a central and supreme influence of the home. Never changed. It's always been that way. A Chinese proverb says, says it more clearly. It goes something like this. When a child goes away from home, he carries his mother's hand with him. It's a beautiful saying, isn't it? Now consider the fact that the one who was chosen to influence our Lord, influence him the most in the days of his earthly life was his mother. She alone was the one who was with him all the way from the cradle to the grave. And during his boyhood and youth, he was subject to her as well as to Joseph. What greater tribute could be paid to the dignity and sublimity of motherhood than that? And I was thinking that if it would be possible to sit down with Mary this morning, I would like to ask her, Mary, We've been wondering about this day that is called Mother's Day. And as I reflect on the four Gospels that tell us so many wonderful things about you and about your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus, so many wonderful stories, my thoughts often drift to ask the question, 
Where were you when all those things happened? Were you there the day they ushered your son into Jerusalem as a king? Did you watch, perhaps proud and silent, from some nearby hill as the enthusiasm mounted and the people laid their garments on that dusty road before him, shouting their praises to him? Were you there, Mary? Did that marvelous sight welcome you back to that glorious <coughs> night when shepherds fell down before your baby's lowly bread and said that they heard the angels sing about it? Your son was born to be the king. And on that day in Jerusalem, while you watched those swaying palm branches, did you try to remember the feel? of his tiny body asleep in your arms. I'm sure all you moms can relate to that. Mary, I'm not a mother, I'm a father, and I can relate to some things. Jeff, my youngest boy, is 53 years old now, but I can still close my eyes and feel him, new and fresh, wrapped in a Winnie the Pooh receiving blanket, and smelling of baby magic and talcum powder. And I suppose that if it were possible to ask his mother if she still remembered the pain of childbirth, it wasn't an easy delivery for her. And somehow I don't believe that one could not remember the experience. And somehow all the events of that particular morning all run together now in my mind except for the words that the attending nurse said, congratulations, you have a son. Mary, was Joseph like that as well? And as you watched your son on that donkey's colt that day at Jerusalem, did you think back at the time that he had shown you the glory in common things? Did he see animals in the cloud formations like all kids do? Is that the Mother's Day message I see in your eyes? Miracle, majesty abound in the common things for those who can see with childlike eyes. Truth may be born in a stable or ride on a lowly donkey or paint a glory scene across a wide mental sky. Thank you, Jesus. The fifth commandment says, Honor thy father and thy mother. And we would not be wrong if we put the emphasis on this day on honor thy mother. And this commandment stands at the head of the second table of the law. It is the first and fundamental statute in our duty to man. Here we have laid down for us the very wrap and woof of society in general and of Christian society in specifics. Without Christian homes, there cannot really be a Christian church. Without dedicated, concentrated Christian mothers, there cannot be Christian homes. The Christian religion is a religion of the home. The home was a place where God chose that his son would be raised. He chose the nurture and instruction and discipline of the home as a place where his son should grow and develop into perfect manhood. He didn't choose the temple. He didn't choose some institution. He chose the home. And in Christianity, there is no substitute for the home. The government or society will never take its place. Parental authority, parental honor, parental love must be guarded and kept at all cost. I love the story. I think that I've shared this with you before, but I love the story of the mother who accompanied her child, her boy, who was going to go to college. And she wanted to make sure that he had the right kind of roommate. She also wanted to make sure that the college didn't tolerate foul language, 
dirty movies, or alcoholic beverages. She wanted assurance that her son would be exposed to a totally Christian atmosphere. She told the administrator, she says, after all, this is the first time he's been away from home except for the six years he spent in the Marine Corps. <laughs> that might take a while to sink into something. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Praise God for mothers. Yeah. And the tragedy of our day is that we don't, that we, uh, is not that we don't have good children. Uh, we have the finest, most promising children of any generation. They are way ahead of us in many aspects. Neither is the tragedy of our day and the fact that we don't have good institutions. We have some of the finest, best equipped institution that the world ha has ever known. But the tragedy of our day is that the sanctity, the authority, and the love of the home has been violated in so many ways. If we would seek knowledge and love and happiness for ourselves and for our children, then the place to begin is in our homes and in our families. Amen. The commandment, honor thy father and thy mother, is not an arbitrary commandment. It is the most natural, reasonable necessity of society. And that's how it should be. If any man or woman has a right to any honor, it is our parents. Think of the love and care which they have given us through all of our infant days. Think of the expense and the time and the effort which they so generously gave. And this is especially true of you mothers. In times of sickness or injury, you moms would drop all else that your children would be cared for. Now, if you've ever raised chickens, you would be amazed at how a, a day-old little chick completely trusts their instincts. They eat, drink, scratch, they care for themselves. But for us humans, it takes months, even years, before we can do one thing for ourselves. And all of this is in order that the child might have the love and discipline of the home and be brought up in the nurture and the admonition of our Lord. The real purpose of the fifth commandment is not to safeguard the honor of parents. It is rather for the sake of children. Children are happier and safer if they obey and honor their parents. Studies have been conducted that when it comes to COVID-19 or any other serious illness, the child who has been taught to obey stands four times the chance of recovery than an undisciplined child who will not obey. Now, you may be sitting here this morning and, and thinking, hey, Pastor, you didn't know my parents. <laughs> they were just old fogies, right? One mother overheard two children talking, and one said, what in the world can we do about our parents? And the other answered, there's nothing you can do by, because by the time we get them, they're too old and set in their ways. You can't change them. <laughs> well, don't try and change your parents. Let's honor them instead. And today and every day, remember to honor them. So today and every day, let's pay special tribute to our mothers. I don't believe moms love their children because of a commandment but they have been blessed by God with that kind of ability to love. Amen. And let's face the fact there is a fragility of love. It can be broken, and we can lose touch with the renewing, sanctifying power of that love. And, but when we begin to feel the disconnectedness, we need to pray urgently and turn ourselves most earnestly to God. Yes. Seeking that renewal of life and love within us. We live in a time and in a society where there are truckloads of powerful and toxic elements constantly invading the vine to clog the connections. You can pick up uh, a newspaper or read your 
watch your television. Lord, I remember reading once where there was nine children were found uncared for in an apartment. And I can only fairly guess that there are many, many more that never make the news. Disconnectedness with God and family has become actually an epidemic in our country. We need to do our best to repair this earth. Mother is not just a name, folks. It is a divine function. To mother is the bearer of life, as Yvette said this morning. George Bernard Shaw said, we all assume when we're young that our mothers are perfect. Most of us find out later that they were not. Few of us ever forgive them for not being so. It was, of course, the wrong assumption in the first place on our parts. But mothers do try to live up to it anyway. I love that. God bless all you mothers on this very special day. For always be being lovable and dear for thoughtful things you find to do and to say that mean so much to others all year long for patience for willingness to share whatever comes in joy and in sorrow as well for thoughtfulness and tender loving care god bless you mothers all you lifetimes through love one another Pray for and forgive one another always and do it swiftly. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you.